Sunday, March 3rd, 2019, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. This afternoon, I want to talk about the dollar and why I think its uh, status as the top reserve currency in the world is going to continue to dwindle and how I think mainly China and its currency, the renminbi, will rise in importance relative to the dollar. Uh, that doesn't mean to say the dollar won't be a reserve currency. And to look at that and how uh, I think the dollar is going to go, uh, I want to look at an article I just saw on Zero Hedge about sterling as a reserve currency. Uh, and it, the article says, could Brexit trigger the demise of sterling as a reserve currency? Part one. And you might think, well, sterling isn't a reserve currency. Uh, well, you, you'd be mistaken because sterling is still part of the SDR basket. It's 8.09% of the SDR basket. So reading through this article is quite interesting. So uh, I'll uh, read from it and I'll quote. Uh, and it says, in 1947, following uh, World War II, the pound amounted to over 80% of world reserves. About half of global trade was financed using sterling, emphasizing its importance. Gradually, though, sterling status began to diminish as international liquidity of the dollar gained traction. In 1949, sterling was devalued 30% from $4.03 to $2.80, with currency reserve losses for that year valued at $564 million. UK current account and balance of payments deficits were said to be leading factors for the devaluation. Just a gradual decrease, but it's surprising as well that just after uh, World War II, as the article said in 1947, 80% of the world reserves were in sterling. You would think it was the dollar, but it wasn't. But um, so this is how uh, the decline has been. By the 1970s, uh, Sterling reserves dropped below 10%, as it says here in, in the article. By 1974, they had declined to 7%. And then you had another, the Black Wednesday crisis of September 92. There was another sterling uh, devaluation. I'll quote from the article. It says, if we fast forward to the third quarter of 2018, we find that the pound accounts for 4.49% of international reserves. By comparison, the dollar of uh, uh, accounts for 61.9 percent and it says while sterling reserves today are 480 billion far exceed uh, historical holdings it is important to realize that the global expansion of liquidity since the u.s came off the gold standard particularly the increase of dollars outweighs sterling by a considerable margin and he goes on to say uh, the author of this article uh, Stephen Guinness, towards the end of the article, that uh, he thinks uh, there could be another uh, sterling crisis, uh, uh, even though we have seen a big devaluation of sterling since the 08 crisis. Don't forget, uh, we got to above 211 against the dollar in 2007, and we're now around 130. Uh, but he goes on to say that the only way uh, for uh, the Bank of England to defend uh, sterling during a, cr a possible crisis uh, or in relation to Brexit would be to try and use its um, foreign reserves. So he says here, as for the UK's foreign currency reserves, according to the Bank of England, the latest holdings come to 136,306 billion. That's a mistake has made there because that would be trillion. It's 136,306 million. So it's 136 billion. So the world has 480 billion dollars of sterling reserves. So if there's a concerted uh, action to get rid of those sterling reserves, uh, the Bank of England has about, uh, let's say, a third uh, of uh, a third in its own reserves to try to defend the pound. Uh, and he goes on to say, the uh, Mr. Guinness, in the event of a renewed crisis in sterling, where the currency came, came under sustained attack, it is these reserves which the bank would likely use to try and defend the pound. What's that got to do with the dollar? Well, I think the dollar is going the same way. 
of sterling. Uh, in this article, Mr. Guinness talks about how uh, uh, the UK was a creditor nation, uh, but then with uh, World War One and World War Two, they became better nation. The, the country that benefited the most, of course, was the United States, became the biggest creditor nation in the world. Uh, but the U.S. used up all its credit, and now it's the biggest debtor nation in the world. So why do I think China and its currency, the yuan or renminbi, will become more and more important as a reserve currency? Well, there's two factors. One of them is the amount of uh, foreign uh, exchange reserves uh, that China has. So as you can see here from Wikipedia, China has the biggest foreign exchange reserves in the world, uh, 3,053 100 million. So that's uh, 3 trillion, just over 3 trillion as of October 2018. Then you've got Japan, 1.2 trillion. And if you look further down, you've got the United Kingdom, 173 billion, and the US, 126 billion. So small amount of uh, uh, foreign exchange reserves. And the reason why the U.S. doesn't need uh, big reserves is because the dollar is still the major reserve currency. But that's changing. And then you look at the uh, list of creditor nations uh, by net international investment position per capita. And uh, China is at the bottom here. Uh, but uh, you have to look at it uh, this way. You've got the external assets, which is 6 point. 2 trillion and you've got external liabilities of 4.62 trillion. Look at it gross, it's uh, just under 1.6 trillion, which is third on that list. First is Japan, of course, and then Germany. And uh, while well, the US and the UK are nowhere to be seen there because they're debtor nations, right? And I agree, you know, there's been a big credit boom in China, there's a lot of internal debt. Uh, you know, corporate debt, government debt, uh, consumer debt in China, but it's still uh, one of the top creditor nations in the world, and I think it will continue to be so. So that's why I think the renminbi uh, is going to continue to gain in stature. And the other thing that I think the um, American uh, establishment is doing, they're using the U.S. dollar too much as a, a weapon for whatever they want uh, people to do around the world or their nations. And people are trying to find ways uh, around it. They're trying to find new arrangements, uh, alternatives to SWIFT and uh, alter alternatives to uh, trading, you know, with other countries instead of the United States. Uh, case in point now, Venezuela. Uh, the U.S. has stopped buying oil from Venezuela, but uh, Venezuela has found uh, new partners. I listened to the uh, Venezuelan uh, foreign minister the other day, and uh, he said they, they found new partners. He didn't want to say who they were because uh, the U.S. might punish those people. So in a way, I think the U.S. is shooting itself uh, in the foot by doing that because people are trying to get away from the dollar. And that's going to uh, only hurt the dollar in the future, in my opinion. And uh, so... What's led to uh, the U.S. going the same way as the United Kingdom? Well, we know the United Kingdom was the, the, the wars, uh, you know, the big wars in the 20th century, World War I and World War II, that basically bankrupted the United Kingdom. For the U.S., it's been more gradual. It's been, of course, it's been defense spending and unwinnable wars, like uh, Vietnam, uh, Afghanistan, uh, war, you know, the war on terror, and all the inter interventions everywhere. And it's also been leaving the gold standard internationally. It's allowed the U.S. to spend beyond its means. It's had the exorbitant uh, privilege, as uh, a French statesman, I forgot his name, said in the 1970s, I think, and the petrodollar uh, is helped the U.S. But now, with things changing, with the U.S. using the dollar as a weapon, more and more people are finding alternatives. And by that, I mean countries like Venezuela, like China, like Russia, like Turkey. And that could increase. Who knows? 
uh, it's very difficult for the U.S. to uh, pay off its debts. If anything, it's going to keep uh, trying to um, increase spending because there's no way out. The deficits are going to increase. And I think uh, more and more countries are going to try to find alternatives. But you saw that with the UK, it took uh, quite a long time. It took like 30, 40, 40, 50 years with the US. It could take the same amount of time, but it could also take less time. Who knows? Uh, it's uh, difficult to say, but uh, that's why I think it's important, as always, to uh, for people to... Uh, uh, have alternatives to fiat money like physical gold and silver and I've spoken about that, that before uh, The other thing I want to talk about today is Sterling and the Bank of England and something that just shows how um, the system is not really quite right uh, Because in the UK as we know well, well some of you might not know but uh, the sovereign which is this coin, the gold sovereign, it's under a quarter of an ounce of gold. Uh, according to Wikipedia, it says the sovereign is a gold coin of the United Kingdom with a nominal value of one pound sterling. So basically, this is a pound. Of course, I wouldn't go in the, in the shop and buy a newspaper for a pound with a, a gold sovereign because it's worth over 200 pounds, right? So that's how it's kept out of circulation. And then if you look at the, uh, also uh, at the sovereign and what it says about uh, the sovereign, it says, as a legal tender coin, the sovereign is exempt from capital gains tax for UK residents. So it is a legal tender coin. So that means it, it, it technically it is accepted as legal tender. So yesterday I was looking at some old uh, banknotes that I have. I, could, I like collecting some uh, old banknotes from countries all around the world. And I found this one here. It's a, a Bank of England one pound, one pound note. There you go. One pound. I think it's got Isaac Newton in the back, Sir Isaac Newton. And it still says, I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of one pound. Bank of England. Uh, this note, I think... Uh, used to be legal tender it's not anymore it was legal tender until uh, 1984 but you would think uh, if this is a pound nominally legal tender and this is a pound and the Bank of England promises to pay the bearer the sum of a pound uh, is would it be possible to go to the Bank of England and say can I have a sovereign please uh, they probably wouldn't give it to you but uh, <laughs> And this note is not accepted anymore as legal tender. But I looked at uh, legal tender in the history of the Bank of England and its notes. And it says here that in Scotland it's still accepted, this note. And at the end it says the Bank of England will exchange old one pound notes for their face value in perpetuity. So uh, that means I... Technically, I could go to the Bank of England and try to exchange that for something that is legal tender and has a nominal value of a pound, which is a gold sovereign. Uh, I haven't tried it. Maybe uh, other people might want to try it. Maybe I should try it. But uh, I have a feeling they will not give me a, a sovereign for, for this piece of paper. And it just goes to show how uh, sterling and... Not, not only sterling, but all the fiat monies are just like a very uh, suspect <laughs> uh, that you could a uh, hundred years ago for that get that. And now you get like one two hundredth uh, of that, uh, <laughs> you know, if you if you well, you don't even get any gold uh, if you go to the Bank of England. But uh, that just goes to show that uh, there is a problem there. It doesn't really add up. Right. Uh, if you can take this to the Bank of England in perpetuity and ask for, uh, you know, a, a, a redemption of, the, of its face value and the fact that this is still legal tender and the nominal, nominal value is a pound. So in my, uh, in my view, logically, you should be able to 
take that to the Bank of England and get one of those. But uh, the system is not logical, is it? So that's what I wanted to talk about in addition to the, the history of reserve currencies in the last hundred years, the sterling and the dollar. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, if you enjoy uh, the channel, but you haven't subscribed yet, think about subscribing. If you subscribe, uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell up here so that you are notified of my new videos. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Steemit, and on DTube. I wish you all a great rest of the weekend, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.